Shalom. My name is Adam, and I welcome you to the parable of the vineyard. Every day, Yahuwah is waking up a remnant, a group of people who are coming out of deceptions, realizing our walk is to consist of faith and obedience to His righteous commands. Each week, we read through and examine a portion of the Torah, allowing the Spirit of the Most High to guide, teach, and open our eyes and ears to the wondrous matters out of His law. Join us as we seek to be refined by His Word, preparing ourselves for the return of our King of Kings, being faithful and obedient, walking in His way, truth, and life. Shabbat Shalom and welcome back, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Parable of the Vineyard YouTube live stream of our Torah portion reading. My name is Adam, your host, and I welcome you. This is week 32, Behar on the mountain. Small Torah portion, but you know how, like, how we like to do it. We're going to dig through this as much as we can. So even though this is just uh, Leviticus 25, 1 through 26, 2, a lot to cover. This is focused around the sabbatical year, the year of rest, and the year of Jubilee. Well, in this Torah portion, what may seem like just bland instructions for letting the land rest and uh, a year of jubilee and restoration, this this Torah portion is all about trust. It's all about forgiveness. It's all about release. It's all about restoration. These are some key principles for our walk. So really excited to go over this with you. Let's start with the shofar. No, let's start with prayer, then shofar, and we'll get into it. Let's bow our hearts. Heavenly Father, Yahuwah Most High, Abba, we just thank you so much, Father. We thank you for the forgiveness and the release and the rejuvenation we have through Messiah Yahushua, that he came and offered himself up for us that we may have everlasting life and forgiveness. We thank you for showing us, Father, that this true faith is about faith and obedience, belief and obedience, faithfulness. Father, we thank you for opening our eyes to the wondrous matters out of your Torah. We ask that your Ruach HaKodesh would be here with us to teach us, to guide us, to show us and say, this is the way. Walk in it. And Father, we just thank you so much. May eyes and ears be opened and blessed as we go through your word tonight in Yahushua's mighty name. Amen and hallelujah. Now we'll show far. Alright, so here we are, Leviticus 25. We will be reading from the Sefer version and cross-referencing with uh, many other scriptures as well. So, Leviticus 25. Here we go. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashorel of Israel, and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto Yahuwah. So, we've been speaking a lot about the weekly Sabbath that we keep, that we were we rest. We've been talking about the feast days, uh, which are celebrations to Yah, where we also rest from our labors. But now he's talking about how the land shall rest. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Shabbat of rest unto the land, a Shabbat for Yahuwah, you shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. So very much like we read last week in Leviticus 23, very simple instructions. Work six days, rest the seventh. Doesn't need to be some really confusing thing that, you know, it's just very simple. Work six days, rest the seventh. Work six, six days, rest the seventh. So now, work the land six years, let it rest the seventh. That which grows of its own accord of your harvest, you shall not reap. Neither gather the grapes of your vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. And the Shabbat of the land shall be food for you, or increase, or benefit to you. For you, and for your servant, and for your maid, and your hired servant, and for your stranger that sojourns with you, and for your cattle, and for the beasts that are in your land, shall all the increase thereof be meat, or uh, for productivity, for a blessing, for benefit, for food. And that sounds really counterproductive because you're like, 
you know, uh, you kind of need to work the land to get that food, but you're telling me to rest and it'll be food for me. Now think about this. This took trust. This is trust 101. We don't even understand. I mean, maybe a very small percentage of you out there may be um, living on a homestead where you totally live off the land and you don't ever have to go to the market. You don't ever have to go to the grocery store, uh, the farmer's markets, um, whatever. You may be doing that. And for you, this would be a massive test. This is how you how you're able to continue to live. This is your very basics, your bread, your food. And so for the Israelites, it would have been a massive test. They would have been like, well, this makes no sense, right? No sense. Here, let's, let's, let's talk about our trust in him. And this is something that we know that the Israelites didn't keep because all throughout the scriptures, it talked about how they abhorred his Sabbaths. They they defiled his Sabbaths. It could have been the weekly Sabbath. could have been the feast days. could have also been this one, a lack of trust. Leviticus 26, 32 through 35, and he's prophesying that this is going to happen. And I'll bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths, as long as it lies desolate. And you be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when he dwelt upon it. So he already prophesied and knew they wasn't going to do it. They weren't going to do it. And showed them the punishment ahead of time. Second Chronicles 36, 14 through 21. Moreover, all the chief priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen and polluted the house of Yahweh, which he had howled in Jerusalem. So they went after the ways of the nations. They're like, ah, oh, this is fun, you know. It's fun, you know, in modern day con you know, context. Ah, oh, it's, it's fun to, you know, dress up a tree with all the lights and the ornaments and the presents and the bows and the wrapping paper and and the really annoying catchy music and you know the parties and it's not for us right but you have the majority of his people doing it and so there's nothing new what exactly those celebrations looked like thousands of years ago I don't know Maybe similar. In Jeremiah 7, we get a little snippet where, um, you know, the children would go out and gather the wood. The father would kindle a fire. The mom would make cakes to the queen of heaven. I don't know. And Yahweh Elohim of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up at times so diligently and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. So he sent people to make, hey, this is what you're supposed to be doing. But they mocked the messengers of Elohim and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of Yahweh arose against his people till there was no remedy. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion upon young man or maiden, old man or him that stooped for age. He gave them all into his hand and all the vessels of the house of Elohim, great and small, and the treasures of the house of Yahuwah, and the treasures of the king, and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. And they burnt the house of Elohim, and brake down the wall of Jerusalem, and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire, and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia, to fulfill the word of Yahuwah by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths, for as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. So 70 years of resting the land. That would cover about 490 years. Is that right? Hold on. Calculator. Which it comes out to at 70 times 7. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It would be yeah, 70 times 7. Yeah, 490 years. Basically 490 years of them not doing it. So... It seems as though they did it for a time, maybe a short time, maybe like David's reign and Solomon. And then that was probably about it. 
they probably just abandoned it so quickly just like they abandoned the feast days and the sabbaths and new moons or sort of mixing those with pagan practices so this is extremely important you see here this is two times in the torah and in the prophets well chronicles that this is this is something major like their land needed to rest Job 13.15, so let's talk about trust. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. Psalm 2.12, kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. I would challenge you, just go to uh, like a word search for scriptures and just put in trust and read all the scriptures for trust. We're just going to read a very small handful. I mean, we could have honestly... We can spend the next five hours talking about scriptures that talk about trust. Psalm 511, But let all that put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let them also that love your name be joyful in you. Psalm 37, really good. Fret not yourself because of evildoers, neither be you envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. And this is why we continue to talk about it. We've really been talking a lot about this in our Enoch study, if you haven't watched it. To not worry about what the ruling elite or the Bill Gates or these kind of people are doing, the Elon Musks, it doesn't matter for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. They're going to get theirs. Right now, listen. For all that that's going on, trust in Yahuwah and do good. So shall you dwell in the land, and verily you shall be fed. That's the, that's the promise. Trust in Him, and there's a grand promise. Delight yourself also in Yahuwah, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way unto Yahuwah. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in Yahuwah and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon Yahuwah, they shall inherit the earth. <clears throat> for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be yea. You shall diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. Right? They're here today, there tomorrow. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just, and gnashes upon him with his teeth. Yahweh shall laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent the bow, to cast down the poor and the needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall be shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but Yahweh upholds the righteous. Yahweh knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of Yahuwah shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume, and to smoke they shall consume away. The wicked borrows and pays not again, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of good man are ordered by the way of Yahuwah, and delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for Yahuwah upholds him with his hand. I have been young. And now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lends, and his seed is blessed. And this is trust. You know, when you when you give out freely, you lend, um, helping people, you're trusting that Yahweh will replenish those provisions that you can have what you need as well. And that's what this is about here, this year, the Sabbath year of the land. About trust. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For Yahweh loves judgment and forsakes not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom and his tongue talks of judgment. The law, the Torah of his Elohim in his heart, is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches for the righteous and seeks to slay him. Yahweh will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on Yahuwah and keep his way. He shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. 
Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of Yahuwah. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And Yahuwah shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. And that, brothers and sisters, is something that we could really take hold of in our time. <clears throat> With the craziness that's going on in the world. It's like, it's, I mean, <sighs> it's like every year, every month, it's like, can it get any crazier? But this is our one of our big tests in our time. Sure, our individual trials and tribulations and but really no matter how bad it gets and it's easy to say right now because none of us know. None of us have any clue of how bad it can get before his return. But that verse right there, let me read it again. And Yahweh shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. And we need to walk in that with all of our heart. Psalm 56. Be merciful to me, O Elohim, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresses me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me. O most high, what time I am afraid I will trust in you. It reminds me of um, Jacob when Esau was coming to him with like 400 men and could have easily just destroyed him and all of his family. He said, he pray, he got down and he, on his knees, he prayed, he prayed to Yahuwah and he admitted to Yahuwah that he was afraid but that he was going to put his trust in Yah. It's natural for us to have some sort of, to be afraid, but what we do with that fear what our next steps are is really where he tests the heart. Are we going to trust in him or are we going to be just absolutely frightened of man and just terrified and have no trust? In Elohim, I will praise his word. In Elohim, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Shall they escape my iniquity? And their anger cast down the people, O Elohim. You tell my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle, are they not in your book? When I cry unto you, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for Elohim is with me. And Elohim will I praise his word, and Yahuwah I will praise his word. And Elohim I have put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Your vows are upon me, O Elohim. I will render praises unto you. For you have delivered my soul from death. Will you not deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before Elohim in the light of the living? Psalm 118. O oh, give thanks unto Yahuwah, for he is good, because his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endures forever. Let now let them now that fear Elohim or Yahuwah say that his mercy endures forever. I called upon Yahuwah in distress. Yahuwah answered me and set me in a large place. Yahweh is more on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Yahweh takes my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidences, confidence in princes. This is what we were talking about last week, really, about not putting our trust in government. Even though we live here and we need to be... Um, well-behaved people, right? We shouldn't just be like, um, <clears throat> you know, down with the government. That's not, that's not, I don't think the position we should take at all. But where does our help and our trust, where does our help come from and where do we put our trust, right? I think that's something that gets, the, the lines get blurred. Um, even in this Torah movement, I think really all of our trust and confidence should be in Yahuwah alone, not in politics, not in, in those kind of things at all. All nations compass me about, but in the name of Yahuwah will I destroy them. They compass me about, yea, they compass me about, but in the name of Yahuwah I will destroy them. They compass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns, for in the name of Yahuwah I will destroy them. You have thrust sore at me that I might fall, but Yahuwah help me. Yahuwah is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Right? Song of Moshe. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. 
The right hand of Yahweh does valiantly. The right hand of Yahweh is exalted. The right hand of Yahweh does valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of Yahuwah. Yahuwah has chastened me sore, but he has not given me over into death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them, and I will praise Yahuwah. This gate of Yahuwah into which the righteous shall enter, I will praise you, for you have heard me and are become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused is become the head of the corner. This is Yahuwah's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which Yahuwah has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech you, O Yahuwah. O Yahuwah, I beseech you, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that comes in the name of Yahuwah. We have blessed you out of the house of Yahuwah. Elohim is Yahuwah, which has showed us light. Right, Torah, bind the sacrifice of the courts, even unto the horns of the altar. You are my Elohim, and I will praise you. You are my Elohim, I will exalt you. Give thanks unto Yahuwah, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Isaiah 26, 1-4, I think this is the last one. And that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, right, New Jerusalem. Salvation will Elohim appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates, what gate? That's the gate to New Jerusalem. That the righteous nation which keeps the truth, the Torah, may enter in. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. Deuteronomy 6, right, focusing on his ways, because he trusts in you. And that's how we show our trust, by removing the ways of the world in our former lives, our former lusts, our former issues, problems, anger, envies, jealousies, lusts, whatever, by, by, by removing those and walking in his ways shows that we trust him. By walking in his Sabbath, it shows we trust him. By walking in his feast days, it shows we trust him. What about letting your land rest on the seventh year? Now, we've talked about this before because this this is not a new command. We've been talk, we talked about this a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. But you know, for those of you that have gardens, what do you think? Even though te- even though technically it says this is a commandment for the for the land, do you not think that Yahweh would be like, huh? Trust me, or he or she trusts me. Yeah, they trust me. I don't know. Trust you in Yahweh forever, for in Yahweh is everlasting strength. Trust, 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 trust. Nahum 1 7, Yahweh is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows them that trust in him. So when this day, the, Nahum is all about the day of Yahweh. It's, I mean, it's like, rawr. but when that day comes, right, a stronghold in the day of trouble, right, so a shield. He's our shield, our, our protection, and he knows them that trust in him. He knows. He knows if you really trust in him or not. He knows. Some more good stuff about trust. Just, this is Sirach too. If you haven't read the book of Ecclesiasticus, a.k.a. Sirach, you are missing out. This is one of the best chapters in all of Scripture. Sirach 2, if, you, if you're unfamiliar for new, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, it was included in the 1611 KJV under the Apocrypha section. So this isn't considered Apocrypha. My son, if you come forward to serve Yahuwah, prepare yourself for temptation or trials or testing. Set your heart right and be steadfast and do not be hasty in time of calamity. Cleave to him and do not depart, that you may be honored at the end of your life. Accept whatever is brought upon you and in changes that humble you, be patient. I'm going to read that again. Accept whatever is brought upon you, and in changes that humble you, be patient. Think Job. For gold is tested in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of humiliation. Trust in him, and he will help you. Make your way straight and hope in him. You who fear Yahuwah, wait for his mercy, and turn not aside, lest you fall. You who fear Yahuwah, trust in him, and your reward will not fail. You who fear Yahuwah, hope for good things, for everlasting joy and mercy. Consider the ancient generations and see whoever trusted in Yahuwah and was put to shame. Nobody. Or whoever persevered in the fear of Yahuwah and was forsaken. Or whoever called upon him and was overlooked. For Yahuwah is compassionate and merciful. He forgives sins and saves in times of affliction. Woe to timid hearts and to slack hands and to the sinner who walks along two ways. Woe to the faint heart, for it has no trust. Right? To the faint hearted, like, oh, 
Oh. Like, oh. You know, food shortages. The 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 jabby jab, you know, uh you know, diesel fuel, there it's gonna run out and we're not gonna have any in Do we trust him or not? I mean, seriously, at the end of the day, do we trust him or not? Or are we going to buy into this fear that man is selling? Seriously. Woe to the faint heart, for it has no trust. Therefore, it will not be sheltered. Woe to you who have lost your endurance. What will you do when Yahweh punishes you? Those who fear Yahweh will not disobey his words. And those who love him will keep his ways. Strong verse. Those who fear Yahweh will seek his approval. Hello. Don't you remember like when dad and you wanted to make dad happy? Well, nothing's changed. And those who love him will be filled with the Torah. Those who fear Yahuwah will prepare their hearts and will humble themselves before him. Such a good passage. Ooh, 1 Maccabees 2, 49-64. Now the days drew near for Matthias to die, and he said to his sons, Arrogance and reproach have now become strong. It is a time of ruin and furious anger. Now, my children, show zeal for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Remember the deeds of the fathers which they did in their generations and receive great honor and an everlasting name. An everlasting name. Was not Abraham found faithful when tested and it was reckoned to him as righteousness? I mean, think about that, right? Leave everything you have and go, right? Leave your father's house, leave your comfort and just go. Take your only son and take him up and offer him for burnt sacrifice. Boom, just done, did it. Whatever, whatever he asked. And so Messiah came and suffered a brutal death, crown of thorns, whipped, spit, mocked, hair pulled, beard pulled, mangled, hung on a tree, cross, stake, piece of wood. How about that? And we can't walk as he walked according to the commandments, which are not a burden, but delightful. It's easy. The walk may be hard, but his commandments are easy. The testing may be hard, but that's the great contest. Are, are we legitimately his or not? Are we going to succumb to the world and its lusts and the, the devil and his allure? Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment and became Lord of Egypt. Phinehas, our father, because he was deeply zealous for Yahuwah, for his Torah, received a covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Yahusha, Joshua, became, uh, because he fulfilled the command, became a judge in Israel. Caleb, because he testified in the assembly, received an inheritance in the land. David, because he was merciful, inherited the throne of the kingdom forever. Elijah, because of the great zeal for the Torah, was taken up into heaven. Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael believed and were saved from the flame. They trusted in Yahuwah. Think about that. Wow. Daniel, because of his innocence, was delivered from the mouth of the lions. And so observe from generation to generation that none that put their trust in him will lack strength. Do not fear the words of a sinner, for his splendor will turn into dung and worms. This is exactly what we were reading earlier. Earlier, Who cares about what they're selling us and fear? Their time is coming. Today he will be exalted, but tomorrow he will not be found because he has returned to the dust and his plans will perish. My children, be courageous and grow strong in the Torah, for by it you will gain honor. And I believe those words. So, you know, this trust thing can go two ways. You think back about your childhood days, right? Trust your parents that they had, you know, made the best decisions for you. Now, I know we live in a time where maybe not everybody's parents are the best, but what about your parents? Do they trust you? So we need to trust Yahuwah, and we can trust Yahuwah. He's not like a, a faulty parent. There's no fault in him. We can trust him. Does he trust us? Here's Sirach again, chapter 4. Wisdom exalts her sons and gives help to those who seek her. Whoever loves her loves life, and those who seek her early will be filled with joy. Whoever holds her fast will obtain glory, and Yahweh will bless the place she enters. Those who serve her will minister to the Holy One. Yahweh loves those who love her. 
He who obeys her will judge the nations, and whoever gives heed to her will dwell secure. If he has faith in her, he will obtain her, and his descendants will remain in possession of her. For at the first she will walk with him on tortuous paths, and she will bring fear and cowardice upon him, and will torment him by her discipline until she trusts him. And she will test him with her ordinances. And so this is like, um, you know, like when you come into the way, you come into the walk, and the Ruach is given to you. Like it tests you. He tests you. Then she will come straight back to him and gladden him and will reveal her secrets to him. If he goes astray, she will forsake him and hand him over to his ruin. Oops. Uh, Luke 16. Luke 16. Let's see. This is the, the dishonest manager. We'll just read it. So we'll just read a couple of verses here. He who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in in much and he who is dishonest in a very little is dishonest in much if then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon who will entrust you to the true riches and if you have not been faithful in which is another's who will give you that which is of your own no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other you cannot serve elohim and mammon money right uh, I think we're going to come back to this. Let's see. What else do I have here? Yeah. No. We're done here. Okay. So we're we're still talking about trust. So again, this whole thing here is about trust. We're going to read the Testament of Joseph. We're going to read a little bit about trust. The copy of the Testament of Joseph. When he was about to die, he called his sons and his brethren together and said to them, My brethren and my children, hearken to Joseph, the beloved of Israel, to give ear, my sons, unto your father. I have seen in my life envy and death, yet I went not astray, but persevered in the truth of Yahuwah. These my brethren hated me, but Yahuwah loved me. They wished to slay me, but the Elohim of my fathers guarded me. They let me down into a pit, and the Most High brought me up again. I was sold into slavery, and Yahuwah of all made me free. I was taken into captivity, and his strong hands secured me. I was beset with hunger, and Yahuwah himself nourished me. I was alone, and Elohim comforted me. I was sick, and Yahuwah visited me. I was in prison, and my Elohim showed favor unto me. In bonds, and he released me. Slandered, and he pleaded my cause. Bitterly spoken against by the Egyptians, and he delivered me. Envied by my fellow slaves, and he exalted me. And this chief, cap chief captain of Pharaoh entrusted to me his house. And I struggled against a shameless woman, urging me to transgress with her. But the Elohim of Israel, my father, delivered me from the burning flame. I was cast into prison. I was beaten. I was mocked. But Yahweh granted me to find mercy in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Right? So this is just Joseph trusting no matter what. For Yahweh does not forsake them that fear him neither in darkness, nor in bonds, nor in tribulations, nor in necessities. For Elohim is not put to shame as a man, nor as the Son of Man is he afraid, nor as one that is earthborn he is weak or affrighted. But in all those things he does give protection, and in diverse ways he does comfort, though for a little space he departs to try the inclination of the soul, to test you. Can he trust you? In ten temptations or trials he showed me approved, and in all of them I endured, for endurance is a mighty thing and patience gives many good things so this is the most high trusting yosef right all those tests he learned to trust him can he trust us so in, mo in a lot of our in a lot for a lot of us watching we trust him by him saying hey these foods are clean these foods are not eat these and it'll go well with you right so we're starting to learn that like well, maybe it's a good idea not to eat pork and shellfish and um, birds of prey and, you know, all these different things. Let's eat clean. Even even modern day science will tell you, you know, a lot of those foods are just not good for you. Right. But it tastes good. So. What about letting the what about letting the land rest? That's a huge sign of trusting him. But for us, for a lot of most of us here that don't really have land, some of you are living in apartments. Maybe you have a little pot, you know, uh, you know, a little little planter outside your window. Can we can we apply this kind of thinking to our everyday life? Well, I believe so. I absolutely believe so.
Where's the, uh, I thought I had the passage there. Hmm. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Okay. So now, Leviticus 25, 8, the year of Jubilee. And you shall number seven Sabbaths of years unto you, seven times seven years, and the space of seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto you forty and nine years. So very much like we read last week with the counting uh, towards um, Shavuot. From first fruits to Shavuot, you count seven Sabbaths, right? Seven times seven, you know, seven times seven days is 49 days, plus the 50th, Shavuot. Very similar for the year of Jubilee. Then shall you cause the shofar or the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month in the day, Yom Kippurim, the Day of Atonement. You shall make the shofar sound throughout all your land, and you shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto the, all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and you shall return every man unto his possession, and you shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that 50th year be unto you. You shall not sow, neither reap that which grows of itself grows of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of your vine undressed, for it is the jubilee. It shall be holy unto you. You shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. And this year of jubilee, you shall return every man unto his possession. And we're going to read a lot more about this jubilee, what it does. But in, in short, it's a release. It's a forgiveness. It's a release. It's a return of people to their possession because people got poor, maybe through... Um, uh, maybe through um, laziness, maybe through just, um, you know, maybe a beast tore through their field and, you know, they had to like sell themselves, um, you know, or, or borrow money. They could sell their property to, you know, to basically they could sell their property to someone else and they would basically still be on that property, work the land. But uh, in the year of Jubilee, everything would be restored back to them. All debts are canceled restored back to them and you know i believe that messiah's first and second coming are on jubilee years let's read isaiah 61 this is the very first passage that messiah read to start his um, ministry we read about this in luke 4 the spirit of yahweh elohim is upon me because yahweh has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives right and so this is a year of liberty where is it? Yeah, proclaim liberty throughout all the land and the inhabitants. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of Yahuwah. And so he paused there. And so we know that this is really his ministry at the first coming. His first coming. What he did. He, so he stopped there, but he stopped mid-sentence. So, and the day of vengeance of our Elohim to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them to them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahuwah, that he might be glorified. So I do believe that his first and second coming are jubilee years. So, uh, let's see. Well, real quick there. You know, a lot of people are asking what year is the year of jubilee? Or a lot of people are actually asking Going back to, I meant to talk about this here earlier, about the Sabbath year. And there's a lot of different information about people, you know, saying they know what year it is. And th there may be some really good information out there. I am currently searching the heavenly luminaries, the sun, the moon, and the stars, to find a seven-year pattern that we can know without a doubt because... I believe that Abba would give us a way to do it. I had a brother that, that shared with me that every seven years, the moon, the sun and the moon will enter into the fourth gate. Some of you that haven't seen my calendar study may not know what I'm talking about. In, in the book of Enoch, it talks about how the sun goes through six different gates throughout the year. The fourth gate is the, um, the spring and the fall equinoxes. So I'm currently looking at that. I wasn't able to find what he's talking about, but I will get back to you on that. Likewise, I believe we can also, we should be able to find the year of Jubilee in the stars as well. The sun, moon, and stars together, excuse me. But anyways, uh, so going back to Messiah and the year of release, the Jubilee. 
Deuteronomy 30. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon you that the blessing and the curse which I have set before you and you shall call them to mind among all the nations where Yahweh Elohim has driven you. So that's happening now. And shall return unto Yahweh Elohim and shall obey his voice according to all that I command you this day. So coming back to his commandments, coming back to his Torah, you and your children with all your heart and with all your soul, that then, so that the very next thing thing to happen, then Yahweh Elohim will turn your captivity and have compassion on you and will return and gather you from all the nations where the Yahweh Elohim has scattered you. If any of yours be driven out into the outmost parts of heaven, from there will Yahuwah your Elohim gather you, and from thence will he fetch you. And Yahuwah your Elohim will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it, and he will do you good and multiply you above your fathers. And Yahuwah your Elohim will circumcise your heart, right, and the heart of your seed to love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Right? So he's going to bring you back. He's going to bring us back to possess the land. So this is about... This is all about returning to our possession. And Yahweh your Elohim will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love Yahweh with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. And Yahweh your Elohim will put all these curses upon your enemies and on them that hate you, which persecuted you. And you shall return and obey the voice of Yahweh and do all his commandments, which I command you this day. And Yahuwah your Elohim will make you plenteous in every work of your hand, and then the fruit of your body, and then the fruit of your cattle, and the fruit of your land for good. For Yahuwah will again rejoice over you for good as you rejoiced of your fathers, if you shall hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah your Elohim to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the Torah, and if you shall turn unto Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul. So we've got to be ready. We have got to be ready for when that jubilee comes. Very similar things we see here, Joshua 6. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And Yahuwah said unto Joshua, See, I have given into your hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus ye shall do six days. And the priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. Now what is interesting here is this is, uh, let's see, I'll show you. Ram's horns. You'll see here, it's the shofar of Jubilee. Shofar of, it's not ram's horns. That's just how they translated it. Yobel, Jubal, Jubilee. All right? Jubilee. Yobel, Yobelim. Specifically, the signal of the silver trumpets. The priest shall bear the ark before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns or, or or trumpets of jubilees. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times and the priest shall blow the, tr- the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast of the ram's horn and when you hear the sound of this trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the cities shall be fa- shall fall flat down and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Uh, pretty prophetic in my opinion uh, of what's to come. I believe that to continue my thought that it'll be a year of jubilee at minimum a year of release when he comes back well i think it's a year of jubilee because they sound that here i'll show you yeah right so in the year of jubilee then shall you cause the shofar of the jubilee or the trumpet of the ram's horn or the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month right and then then shall every man return to his possession Psalm 47, O clap your hands, all you people, shout unto Elohim. Remember in Jericho, shout! Shout unto Elohim with the voice of triumph, right? Teruah! For Yahweh Most High is terrible. He is great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Silah. Elohim is gone up with a shout, Yahweh with the sound of a trumpet. Which one is that one? Sing praises to Elohim, sing praises, sing praises to our king, sing praises. For Elohim is the king of all the earth, sing he praises with understanding. Elohim reigns over the heathen, and Elohim sits upon the throne of his holiness. So is it possible that the the, the shofar from heaven, the trumpet from heaven, is sounding the jubilee and freedom, release? 
1 Thessalonians 4, 13-18, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yahushua died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahushua will Elohim bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of Yahuwah, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Master shall not prevent them which are asleep. For Yahuwah himself, or the Master himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump or trumpet of Elohim, and the dead and Messiah shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Master in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Master. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Is it the shofar of Jubilee, the trumpet of Jubilee? Very possible. Revelation 4, 1 through 2. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. What door is that? Maybe a gate to New Jerusalem, right? And the first voice which I heard as as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up here and I will show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. Joel 2. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahuwah is, uh, comes, for it is nigh at hand. So this is the day of Yahuwah and the destruction, right? This is the destructive force. The earth shall quake. Yahuwah shall utter his voice before his army, right? Because of all this, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto Yahweh Elohim. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repents him of the evil. Who knows if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto Yahweh Elohim. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation. It's interesting, right? Blowing the trumpet. The b- trumpet is blown. And the year of Jubilee, during the Day of Atonement, we also know the Day of Atonement is the day for fasting. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. What do you think is going on here? What do you think is going on here on the Day of Atonement? Hmm. Then Elohim will Yahweh be jealous for his land and pity his people. Why? Because I believe it's the year of Jubilee and it's restored to them. Enoch 1. The words of the blessing of Enoch, wherewith he blessed the elect and the righteous who will be living in the day of tribulation, when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. And he took up his parable and said, Enoch, a righteous man, whose eyes were opened by Elohim, saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the angels showed me. From them I heard everything, and from them I understood as I saw, but not for this generation, but for a remote one, which is for to come. Right now, concerning the elect, I said, and took up my parable concerning them, the Holy Great One will come forth from his dwelling, and the eternal Elohim will tread upon the earth, even upon Mount Sinai, and appear from his camp, we just read that in Joel, and appear in his strength of his might from the heaven of heavens, and all shall be smitten with fear, and the watchers will quake, and great fear and trembling shall seize them unto the ends of the earth, and the high mountains shall be shaken, and the high hills shall be made low, and shall melt like wax before the flame, and the earth shall be wholly rent in sunder, and all that is upon the earth shall perish, and there shall be a judgment upon all men. The day of atonement, the day of judgment. But with the righteous he will make peace and will protect the elect and mercy shall be upon them. And they shall all belong to Elohim and they shall all be prospered and they shall all be blessed. And he will help them all and light shall appear unto them and he will make peace with them. So this day of reckoning is a day of separation. What side of this are we going to be on? Faith and obedience. Spirit and truth. Neither one is diminished. Not a single piece of it. Right? Right? Yahusha is our liberty. He's our freedom. Like the, he is our jubilee. Like when he says, I am the resurrection of life. He is also the jubilee. We've been learning through the book of Leviticus that he's fulfilled all these pieces, including the jubilee. He is our release. He is our freedom. John eight twenty five through 36. Then they said unto him, who are you? And Yahushua said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Why? Even the same I said unto you from the beginning, from the bare sheet, from the Genesis? He's the same one. They understood not that he spoke to them of the Father, 
right? Then said Yahushua unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spoke these words, many believed on him. Then said Yahushua to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Right? It's not about just this moment of belief, and then that's it. You're sealed, signed, delivered. You have to continue in his word. Then you are my disciples. And you shall know the truth, the Torah, and the Torah shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed. We were never in bondage to any man. How say to you? How do you say that you shall be made free? Yahushua answered them, Verily, right, verily, verily, truth, truth, Torah, Torah, I say unto you, Whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. Sin is transgression of the law. 1 John 3, 4. And the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Praise Yahuwah. And how does that even make sense? Well, because he is the word. He is the Torah made flesh. He came and taught us how to walk in his very own law that he gave to all the patriarchs. Abraham knew it. Genesis 26, 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my statutes in my Torah. I butchered that, but you know what I'm saying. First Peter 2, 15 through 16, for so it is the will of Elohim that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty, your freedom for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of Elohim. And how do we show that? Right? By how we walk. Psalm 119, 44 through 45. So shall I keep your Torah continually forever and ever, and I will walk at liberty, freedom, for I seek your precepts. Psalm 19, 7 through 11. The Torah of Yahuwah is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahuwah is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of Yahuwah are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahuwah is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahuwah is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahuwah are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. James 1.25, but whoso looks into the perfect Torah of liberty, freedom, and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Yahushua is our jubilee, and he will be once again, hopefully very soon. Apocalypse of Abraham, chapter 29. He is our freedom. Oh, we're going to go far down here. Uh, wow, much further. Okay, let's keep going. Wow, if this is hurting your eyes, I apologize. It's hurting mine. Okay, chapter 29 of the Apocalypse of Abraham. Uh, this is actually canon in some, with the scripture in some canons, like the Syriac and, can't remember. And I said, eternal, my, this is Abraham speaking Eternal mighty one, how long of a time is an hour of the age? And he said, I decree to keep 12 periods of the impious age among the heathens and among your seed. And what you have seen will be until the end of the time. Count it up and you will understand. Look down at that picture. And I looked and saw a man going out from the left, the heathen side. From the side of the heathen went out men and women and children, a great crowd. And they worshipped him. And while I was still looking on the right side came out and some insulted this man and some struck him and others worshipped him. And I saw that as they worshipped him, Azazel ran and worshipped and kissing his face, he turned and stood behind him. Remember when it said that Satan entered into uh, Judas and remember he betrayed him with a kiss? And I said, Eternal Mighty One, who is this man insulted and beaten by the heathen with Azazel worshipped? And he answered and said, Here, Abraham, the man whom you say insulted, who saw insulted and beaten and again worshipped, is the liberation, right? The freedom from the heathen for the people who will be born from you in the last days, in this twelfth period of the age of my fulfillment. I will set up this man from your tribe, one whom you have seen for my people and will imitate him. You consider him as one called by me. They are changed in their counsels 
And as I'm sorry, and those you saw coming out from the left side of the pitcher and worshiping him, this means that many of the heathen, the Gentiles, will trust in him. And those of your seed you saw on the right side, some insulting him, some beating him, and others worshiping him, many of them that shall be offended because of him. It is he who will test those of your seed who have worshiped him in the fulfillment of the twelfth hour in the curtailing of the age of impiety. Before the age of, age of justice starts to grow, my judgment will come upon the nations who have acted wickedly through the people of your seed who have been set apart for me in those days i will bring upon all earthly creation ten plagues through evil and disease and the groaning of the bitterness of their souls such will i bring upon the generations of those who are on it out of out of anger and corruption of their creations with which they provoke me and then from your seed will i be left will, will be left the righteous men in their number protected by me, I believe this is talking about the 144,000, who strive in the glory of my name toward the place prepared before him. Good stuff. Right? So he is our freedom. All right, back to Leviticus 25. And if you sell aught unto your neighbor or buy aught of your neighbor's hand, you shall not oppress one another. Right? Just weights, just balances. According to the number of the years after the jubilee shall you buy of your neighbor, and according to the number of the years of the fruits shall he sell unto you. According to the multitude of years shall you increase the price thereof, and according to the fewness of the years you shall diminish the price of it, for according to the number of the years of the fruits he shall sell unto you. So how this works is we see at the, the year of Jubilee, everything is reset, right? It goes back to the owner. So let's say uh, this person is poor and they have to sell their land. Let's say the Jubilee happened 10 years ago, so there's 40 years left until the next Jubilee. That price will be more that price would be larger, like the sell of that property would be, he would get more money than if, let's say, the Jubilee happened 40 years ago and there's only 10 years left. Well, there's only 10 years of, of produce coming that field, so the price would be smaller. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Verse 17, You shall not therefore oppress one another, but you shall fear your Elohim, for I am Yahweh Lahaikim. Wherefore, you shall do my statutes and guard my judgments and do them, and you shall dwell in the land safely. And the land shall yield her fruit, and ye shall eat your fill and dwell therein in safety. And if you shall say, so the, here's the test. So earlier, remember, it's like the land of rest, the, the, the seventh year of rest the, the in the Jubilee where they didn't plant, they didn't sow, they didn't harvest. Like, if you live off of your crops, it's like, uh, why, right? So if you shall say, what shall we eat in the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow nor gather in our increase, right? So that's a fair question. Like, uh, so he's, he's, he's addressing concerns ahead of time. Like, uh, how are we going to make it? Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. And you shall sow the eighth year and eat yet of the old fruit until the ninth year. Until our fruits come in, you shall eat of the old store. So he's like, you do this, you trust me on that sixth year. I'm going to give you the increase for three years you know in a um end times sense in uh remember when yahusha likens the field um well he says you know the harvest is plenteous but the laborers are few pray then that yahoo will send more labors i imagine but if he comes on a jubilee Right, the very year before that, it's going to be the sixth year. It's going to be, the harvest is going to be huge right before his return. We still know that the numbers will be very small in comparison to um, the nations, but maybe a, a triple increase than what we're used to as far as people coming into the truth, people coming into this way. Maybe that sixth year before that jubilee will just be Why worry, right? Are we worried about Abba's provision for us? Matthew 6, verse 25. For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on it. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the sky. They do not sow nor reap nor gather crops into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more important than they? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single day to his lifespan? Zero. And why are you worried about clothing? Notice how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor, nor do they spin thread for cloth. 
Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all of his glory clothed himself like one of these. I agree. Have you ever looked at, you ever looked at the flowers of the field? They're beautiful. But if Elohim so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Do not worry then, saying, What are we to eat? Well, that sounds like fun. What are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear for clothing? For the nations, the Gentiles, eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So, can we apply this to our daily walk? About all of our provisions, all of our needs being met? Yes. Well, how does he do so? He says, but first seek the king's kingdom and his righteousness. What is his righteousness? Oops. And it will be our righteousness for us if we are careful to follow all this commandment before Yahweh Elohim, just as he commanded us. Back to Leviticus 25, 23. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine, for you are strangers and sojourners with me. There's another passage elsewhere that says all the gold and the silver is his. All this is his, right? The land, even though somebody may own land, you may own land, but it's all his. He made it all. We're just sojourners, right? We're strangers. We're pilgrims. David said, I'm just a sojourner. Abraham was a sojourner. Isaac was a sojourner. Jacob was a sojourner. It is interesting that a lot of people are selling their homes and getting into campers. Right? Let's be ready to move wherever Abba says. But anyways, that's off topic. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and sojourners with me. And in all the land of your possession, you shall grant a redemption for the land. If your brother be waxen poor and has sold away some of his possession, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which is his brother sold. And if the man have none to redeem it and himself be able to redeem it, then let him count the years of the sale thereof and restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it, that he may return unto his possession. Right? So redeem it. So it's like, mm, I don't like the, using the the concept of pawning, but you know, if you need money, you can go sell something to a pawn shop, and then you can go buy it back. That's the same thing with this land. It's it, it's Torah. It, the The owner couldn't be like, no, you sold it to me. I'm keeping it till the jubilee. They couldn't do that. That was a bad be against Torah. And so here's more compassion on the poor and your own, even your own blood relative. It's Torah. If you have the provisions to go redeem it and you really didn't benefit from it, it would really, you'd, be, you'd buy it back and give it back to your brother and he would have his place back. But Yahweh would see it. You don't think people like that would be restored? That money in some other way? I've asked this question before. How many of you have had just miraculous things where you're just like, mm, I don't even know how I'm going to pay rent tomorrow. And then just out of nowhere, just boom, it's right there. Probably because you prayed and you and you trusted in him and sought him. You know, this release thing is a brilliant plan. Think about it. <laughs> there would be no massive empires. There wouldn't be a handful of families that own 70% of the wealth because they wouldn't be able to monopolize. Every 50 years, they'd have to give it back. Even though in 50 years, they can like like they could just acquire this, acquire that, acquire that, boom, 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 boom. But in 50 years, it's over. It's, it's reset. You wouldn't have these mega empires crushing people. It's a brilliant plan. It's wonderful. But are we employing it today? No. There's a hint of it in America's credit system that uh, bad credit is erased after seven years. Good credit stays on for like three years or three or five years, and then bad credit stays on for seven years. However, they find loopholes that like every couple of years they'll refresh the uh, the debt and it'll just stay on there for a long time. So anyways, um, it's it's just, this is just more of Abba's mercy and compassion, right? 
knowing that, you know, the, the person that went into poverty, it could have been from their own mistakes. It could have been by chance. It could have just been someone else's mistake. I mean, who knows? But Abba gives provisions for that family to not be in perpetual poverty. So it's like if I went into poverty and had to sell my land and maybe even for the duration of my life, I may die in poverty. But there would be a year coming where my children would get that property back and they wouldn't be in perpetual poverty. They'd have a chance. Grandkids, great, great grandkids, all the way down. This is more of Abba's love for each other. And there's, a, I think, a, a hidden gem in here for us to understand about this perpetual mercy and forgiveness. And we're going to read about that here in just a second. Let's keep reading. Leviticus 25. Um, yeah. Then let him count the years of the sale thereof and restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it, that he may return unto his possession. But if he be not able to restore it to him, then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that bought it until the year of Jubilee. And in the Jubilee it shall go out, and he shall return unto his possession. And if a man sell a dwelling house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold. Within a full year may he redeem it. And if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house that is in the walled city shall be established forever to him that bought it throughout his generations. It shall not go out in the Jubilee. So if it's inside of a walled city, then it's a different story. But the houses of the villages which have no wall round about them shall be counted as the fields of the country. They may be redeemed. They shall go out in the Jubilee. Notwithstanding the cities of the Levites and the houses of the cities of their possession, may the Levites redeem at any time. And if a man purchase of the Levite, then that house that was sold and the city of his possession shall go out in the year of Jubilee. For the houses of the cities of the Levim are their possessions among the children of Yeshurel. But the field of the suburbs of their cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. And if your brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with you, then you shall relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with you. Just compassion. Take no usury of him, so no interest or increase, but fear your Elohim. You don't even make a profit on him, that your brother may live with you. You shall not give him your money upon usury, nor lend him your victuals for increase. Right? So not an opportunity to take advantage of him. Be like, ah, I got a, you know, I got a worker. I'm going to work him to the ground and, right, have pity, have compassion. I am Yahweh Lahaikim, which brought you forth out of the land of its reign. This is, he just reminded us, this is part of the Ten Commandments, right? He started off by saying, declaring who he is. I am Yahweh Lahaikim, which brought you forth out of the land of Mitzrayim to give you the land of Canaan and to be your Elohim. And if your brother that dwells with you, by you, I'm sorry, be waxen poor and be sold unto you, you shall not compel him to serve as a bondservant, but as a hired servant, so like as an employee, right? Not as a slave, but like an employee, employ him. And as a sojourner, he shall be with you and shall serve unto you until the year of Jubilee. And then shall he depart from you, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family, and unto the possession of his fathers shall he return. For they are my servants, which I have brought forth out of the land of Mitzrayim. They shall not be sold as bondmen. You shall not rule over him with rigor, but shall fear your Elohim. Both your bondmen and your bondmaids, which you shall have, shall be of the heathen or the nations that are round about you. Of them shall you buy bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them you shall buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. And you shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. But over your brethren, the children of Yashrael, you shall not rule over one another with rigor. And if a sojourner or a stranger wax rich by you and your brother that dwells by him wax poor and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by you or to the stock of the stranger's family, after that he is sold, he may be redeemed again. One of his brethren may redeem him. Either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him or any that is nigh kin unto him of his family may redeem him or if he be able, he may redeem himself. And he shall reckon with him that bought him from the year that he was sold to him unto the year of Jubilee. And the price of his sale shall be according unto the number of the years, according to the time of a hired servant shall be with him. 
If there yet be many years behind, according unto them, he shall give again the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for. And if there remain but few years unto the year of Jubilee, then he shall count with him, and according unto his years he shall give him again the price of his redemption. And as a yearly as a yearly hired servant shall he be with him, and the other shall not rule with rigor over him in your sight. And if he be not redeemed in these years, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, both he and his children with him. For unto me the children of Yashorel are servants, and they are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Mitzrayim. I am Yahweh Elohim. So we have to remember this, that these are his people. You know, and we should have that kind of fear and trembling that though we have disagreements and Things come up when you put a bunch of people together, whether in person or even online, arguments happen, things happen. But I think we have to rec recognize and realize that these people, regardless of how wrong they may be or rude they may be or brash, that they are made in the image of Elohim. And if they confess Messiah, right, and have a desire to walk in his ways, they're your brother, they're your sister, and they're his servants. And we have to have that release, that jubilee in our hearts. Let me explain. Matthew 18. Then came Peter unto him and said, Master, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Till seven times? Yahushua said unto him, I say not unto you until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Kind of interesting that that is, that is what Jerusalem ended up laying waste for for 70 years to, to fulfill 70 years of sabbaths 70 times 7 right 490 therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king which would take account of his servants and when he had begun to reckon one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents i mean that's just a number that you just you don't even understand a talent is 75 pounds right imagine 75 pounds of uh, 75 pounds times 10,000 I mean, it's just it's un, un, unpayable by the average person. But from as much as he had not to pay, his master commanded him to be sold, and his wife and his children, all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Jubilee. He jubileed him, right? How about that? But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him. So it's like a very paltry sum. It's like, you know, very small, like a hundred pennies, or let's just say a hundred bucks, right? Let's just say million, billions of dollars versus a hundred bucks. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that you owe. And his fellow servant fell down on his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their master all that was done. Then his master, after that he had called him, said unto him, Oh, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that jet, all that debt, right? I jubileed you because you did desire me. Should you not also have compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on you? Should you not jubilee, right, your fellow servant, as I jubileed you? And his master was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due to him. So likewise shall my heavenly father do unto you if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespass. Right? The Jubilee is all about release, forgiveness, restoration. And in a spiritual sense, and in an everyday life practicality, we should have that Jubilee in our heart because we are all that servant that owed a debt that we could not pay. And he forgave us that. He jubileed us. Should we not have that same jubilee in our heart? Because I tell you, brothers and sisters, the person that holds on, that holds on, that won't re release, won't forgive, is the one that's in prison. That's how Abba made us. That's how he made us. I'm going to read this for you. Uh, I meant to read this last week. I don't think I did, though. This is Gad this year mentioned reference in first chronicles 29 29 uh let's see chapter eight. Oh, we got a long way to go here we go david's sermon um 
Talking about, hey, so he fills his creation, but his creation does not fill him. He sees everything, but is not seen. He knows the future and reveals it to mankind, for he is the never-ending Elohim, and there is no end to his presence. Power and truth, whole worlds are full with his glory. He gave each person free choice. If one person wants to do good, he will be helped. But if a person wants to do evil, he will find a way. As for us, we will worship our Elohim, who is our king, our master and our savior with love and awe for your wisdom begins with the fear of yahuwah and if you truly understand him you will depart from evil remember and obey the torah of moshe the man of elohim so that you will live a blessed life all of your days ask your fathers and they will teach you ask your elders and they will instruct you do not just listen to the law to the torah but be strong and valiant to obey all of it hearing is like the seed but a deed shows that the seed has taken root in you. It then becomes a tree of belief which produces the fruit of righteousness. What becomes of a smelly rotten seed if no root will come out of it? So hurry, be quick to hear and act. For if you are a true seed, if you have belief and righteousness, then Yahweh will bless you all with peace. Live in peace with each other. Love the deeds and those created in the image of Yahweh like your own selves. Because it is a sign that you love the Creator if you love His creation. Let me read that again. Live in peace with each other. Love the deeds and those created in the image of Yahuwah like your own selves. Because it is a sign that you love the Creator if you love His creation. You cannot take hold of the one but withdraw your hand from the other. Love Yahuwah and also man that it will be well with you all the days of your life. David raised his voice and lift up his hands toward heaven and said, Yahuwah, O Elohim, the Elohim of the spirits of all flesh, Elohim, merciful and gracious, guard Israel forever, save your people and bless your inheritance and tend to them and uphold them forever. And all the people called out, Amen, Amen. And David sent the people away and they went home peacefully. So, finish up the last two verses. You shall make you no idols nor graven image, neither rear up you up a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am Yahweh Lohaikim. We also learn that in Ezekiel, is it Ezekiel 14? Uh oh, I didn't put down notes here. <clears throat> Yeah, here we go. Then some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat down before me, and the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts and have put in front of their faces the stumbling block of their wrongdoing. Should I let myself be consulted by them at all? Therefore speak to them and tell them this is what Yahweh Elohim says. Anyone of the house of Israel who sets up his idol in his heart puts in front of his face the stumbling block of his wrongdoing and then comes to the prophet, I, Yahweh, will let myself answer him in the matter in view of the multitudes of his idols in order to take hold of the hearts of the house of Israel who have turned away from me due to all their idols. So idolatry isn't just a image that we, uh, that people bow down to, but it could be in our hearts. So take, take hold of that brothers and sisters. You shall guard my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I'm Yahweh. And so again, we're learning. It's not just the weekly Sabbaths. It's not just the, um, the seven appointed times, the feasts. Um, it's also the years of release and the Jubilee. So if we're reverencing that year of Jubilee, that year of release, of restoration, we should have that in our hearts. So to have the Torah written on our heart, what does that look like? To have the Jubilee written on our heart because he had that, he gave us that Jubilee. We're still waiting physically for that Jubilee for him to come and restore it. But as far as uh, forgiveness, restoration, Erasing of the debt. Well, Messiah Yahushua was that for us. Is that for us? And we should have that for each other in our hearts. So, I pray that this Torah portion blessed you. And I pray that we can not just hear these words, but actually walk them out and do them. Let's pray. Father Yahweh, Abba, we come before you and bless you in Yahushua's name. We thank you so much for all that you do. We thank you for who you are, for sending your son, for your amazing Torah, things like the Jubilee, just always thinking of your people and forgiving us and being merciful to us, Father. Oh, if we can just have that same compassion with each other, Father, teach us, rend our hearts, give us fruit and cultivation in our heart, Father, that we may walk out your ways in truth and in spirit, neither going to the left or to the right. Father, we thank you. May you bless your people, mark your people who are keeping your Sabbaths, Father. 
and reverencing you and showing you that we fear you, that we love you, and we want to walk as Messiah who should walk. Wake of this generation, Father. Help us that are already awake to be lights to others, to wake others up, Father. We love you and bless you in Yahushua's name. Amen and hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, uh, blessed be the name of Yahuwah and his son Yahusha, and all glory and praise and honor to him, for it is his ruach that he gives us, that instructs us and wakes us up in these last days. Shalom and blessings to you, and um, what do we want to do? So, we're going to do a couple songs. How about that? Uh, no Enoch, for those of you watching live, no Enoch study this week. Um, we're in the book of Enoch. We're now in the course of the heavenly luminaries, a.k.a. the calendar. And when we're going through this, I am taking a fresh look at the calendar, retesting what I currently understand, and making changes if necessary, or uh, solidifying what I already believe to be the truth regarding the calendar. So I took my time this week. Um, we should have the Enoch study out next week at least the first portion of the calendar, and we're going to take a just deep dive into the calendar again. I know that for some of you, that's just a really boring topic. Um, some of you are very interested. I, I believe that the calendar is one of those main topics that causes division and, and contention and arguments, but I think we can strive for the truth uh, without striving with each other. That makes sense? We can be going for the truth without striving with each other. And just sharing our the different understandings we have at you know with love and compassion and mercy and having forgiveness with each other when we think that the other person may be wrong so anyways that's coming up uh shavuot's coming up um if you're interested in shavuoting with us um email me hello at parable of com. we have very limited spaces left um we're doing a kind of a smaller gathering for shavuot um no room for campers, RVs, campers. They're all that's completely filled. But if you have a tent and you want to come, we're camping out for a weekend. Um, I think we can take like 50 more people. That's about it. So, anyways, blessings to you. Shalom. And uh, also stay tuned. We're going to probably start registration for Sukkot very soon, which is going to be in early October. I can't remember the dates off the top of my head. Um, I think it's like the 8th to the 10th of October. And we're going to do it for like 10 days. So anyways, uh, also actually another, um, another, let's see, another uh, announcement. I want to show you Proclaim uh, Hebraic Music Festival. If you guys can't make it to Shavuot, maybe you can make it here. I'm going to show you. Uh, here we go. So, 5th Annual Hebraic Music Fest, June 16th to the 19th. This is in Iowa. Um, I'm going to be going. Many of our uh, group here in Southwest Missouri are going. Um, consider going. It would be great to see you there. Great to see this great music. Uh, our local worship band leader leaders are going to be playing there, Ruth and Lyndon. Mm who does that song, O Yisrael, that a lot of you like. And I just posted a new song. Uh, oh, I didn't download it. I wanted to play it for you. Shoot. He did Psalm 3, which is so good. It's literally my f my new favorite song. Um, I don't think I can play it. any case, so Proclaim Huber uh, Music Festival. Maybe we'll see you there. That might be a huge blessing. Uh, all right, the internet is going really slow, so that's just oh, yeah. let's see. I at least want to show it to you. Okay, yeah, it's taking too long, so we'll just move on. Um, we are gonna play some songs. Oh, here we go, right here. Here we go. Right here. This song, Psalm 3. It's amazing. Amazing. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Brothers and sisters, we will see you soon. What are we going to play? We're going to play a couple songs since we just have one stream tonight. 
We'll start with um, Oh Dachwan. Blessed are you, Yahweh Sabaoth. You gave us of your son so we could have hope. Taught us how to walk in spirit and in truth. He is the vine through him we bear fruit. Your words are lamp unto our feet. Our hearts desire with every single beat. Your Torah inside us commandments we know. Till that creature fall, we wait until it's blown. When you said. Said unto you, your face will not see, and sound that show far and go the shout. We'll sing you praises, praises to our King, and clap your hands, all His people. You walk in vain His Torah is no burden No matter what you're told Sweeter than honey And worth more than gold When you said Seek ye my face My heart said unto you Your face will I see And sound that show far And go with the shout Praises, praises to our King, and clap your hands, all His people, and sing with joy to our Elohim. Standing on Mount Zion, singing that new song, Yahusha and His chosen to Him we belong. Worthy is the Lamb, for He was slain. Kings and priests, by him we shall reign. Open ye the gates for those that keep the truth. You'll give us lasting peace, our minds are stayed on you. Striving to shine bright like your menorah. Walking in the way, the truth, your Torah. I'll never go back. Never go
I sing to Yahuwah, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and he has become my deliverance. He is my El, and I praise him. Elohim of my Father And I exalt Him Yahuwah is a man of battle Yahuwah is His name He has cast Pharaoh's chariots And his army into the sea and his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds. The depths covered them. They went down to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has become great in power. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has crushed the enemy. And in the greatness of your excellence, you pulled down those who rose up against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. And with the wind of your nostrils, the waters were heaped up The floods stood like a wall The depths became stiff In the heart of the sea The enemy said, I pursue, I overtake I divide the spoil My being is satisfied on them I draw out my sword, my hand destroys them you blew with your wind the sea covered them they sank like lead in the mighty waters who is like you oh Yahuwah among the mighty ones who is like you great Kodeshah, awesome in praises, working wonders. You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In your kindness, you led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength, you guided them to your Kodesh dwelling. Peoples heard, they trembled. Anguish gripped the inhabitants of Pelasheth. Then the chiefs of Edom were troubled, the mighty men of Moab. Trembling grips them all the inhabitants of Canaan. Melted, fear and dread fell on them by the greatness of your arm. They are as silent as a stone. Until your people pass over, O oh, Yahuwah. Until the people whom you have bought pass over. You bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance. In the place, O oh, Yahuwah which you have made for your own dwelling. The meek dash, O Yahuwah, which your hands have prepared. Yahuwah reigns forever and ever.
thing in our soul that longs to know our great adorn. As we wander in the wilderness, we lift our cry up to receive His rest. Who is our Elohim? Oh, His voice is calling.
down to them No shall you Ever serve them Keeping his commandment Shows you love him Yahusha did not abolish But strengthen them Blessed are those who keep his way They may have the right to enter through the gate And you shall not take his name in vain and remember six days and then we rest and be refreshed on your mom and dad and then you'll be surely glad keeping his commandment shows you love him Yahusha did not abolish but strengthen them blessed are those who to sing about loving other people. Here's how. And you shall not murder anyone even in your heart. Love everyone and you shall not commit adultery even in your mind. Put that all behind and you shall not Steal anything, be satisfied with what Yah provides, and you shall not tell any lies, for he sees all who's above the skies. You shall not covet anything but keep his ways, you will lack a thing. Keeping his commandment shows you love. Yahusha did not abolish, but strengthen them. Blessed are all.